right, welcome everyone to a Word from the Word broadcast Tuesday night. We're broadcast every Sunday night, 7 to 7.30 p.m. 7 to 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday night and 9 o'clock on Thursday night on Facebook. And it's also put on YouTube at Clay Cordell. You can follow me on TikTok at Clay Cordell. You can email me at CordellClayton at Yahoo.com. And you can write us at the Cordell's 119 Terry, T-E-R-R-Y Avenue, M in South Carolina, 29349. We don't own the copyrights of the music we play on our broadcast. And of course, I don't believe this choir has copyrights on it anyway. So we hope you enjoy this song. It's about six minutes long, but listen to the powerful words. The title of the, the, title of the song, Th Thank You Jesus for the Blood. <laughs> hope you enjoy it.
Amen. Just saw a dove, everybody. <laughs> Glory to his name. Jesus. Hallelujah. like that song and I like that song I like singing and preaching and teaching about the blood the divine blood of Jesus welcome to the broadcast thank God the Holy Ghost approves what we do coming out of this little kitchen <laughs> and for whoever watches it out there we hope you know Jesus as your Savior if you don't you at the end of the broadcast can accept him in your heart and you can say the Lord is my shepherd too amen might not be able to say it right now like David did, but you can say it if you'll ask Jesus into your heart. Well, tonight we continue our series of sermons on Tuesday night on the miracles of Jesus. And there went another dove tonight. I, do y'all see those doves flying through the broadcast? Somebody, that was so big, I, you had to see it. I mean, it was huge. <laughs> Amen. Supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. Well, Brother David had his surgery. And uh, they fixed the problem, but yet, you know, today was the day he had to get up, and you know how that goes in rehab. And uh, so he had a tough time, like everybody does, but he will rebound and recover. He's got too many people praying for him, but of course, Jesus prays for him anyway. So that's who you need praying for you, right? He's the great Savior, Shepherd, and so much more. Now, so keep praying for him, Pastor David Carter. Rock Church in South Carolina where my wife and I go. And uh, we'd like to invite you out right off the bat. 299 Blackstock Road, Inman, South Carolina, 29349. That's, that's their, the mailing address too. So, hallelujah. All right, so tonight we want to, we're want we looking at Jairus' daughter. <laughs> you know, Jairus uh, was the, ed, the head elder and pastor of the Jewish synagogue. Some scholars say he didn't, he did all he could to stop Jesus' ministry before this happened. But things changed when the bottom dropped out and his daughter got uh, sick unto death and then died. And he went to Jesus. He knew that, hey, religion can't help her, but Jesus can. And we'll find out that Jesus not only helped her, but he raised her back from the dead. <laughs> Amen. Wow. So praise the Lord. Now, let's look at it together. Let's turn our Bibles. Thank you for all the comments coming in so far from North Carolina, Virginia. Let's see here. South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia. Let me know you're out there, folks. That's always encouraging for everyone that prays for our broadcast, seeing all these people from different states. Uh, hey, hey, man. Yeah, there's another one. 
Hey, yeah, Tammy's seeing them. <laughs> Amen. So let's get right into it. Right, now, on Sunday and Tuesday night, we go about 30 minutes or 35. As Kyle, you, I was kind of laughing at myself. I said, Is, are these church services? <laughs> and no, uh, we don't have no church, but uh, I guess you could say it's a church. I don't know. But uh, just doing something for Jesus. Uh, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this miracle is recorded by the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Spirit, three times. Matthew 8, at verse, uh, let's begin in verse, let me see here if I can find it here, 23 through 26. Well, that's not it. All right, let's look at Luke. That's the ones we'll use tonight. Luke chapter 8 is where we'll go to. I might have been wrong about it recorded three times. I thought it was, but I know it's recorded in Luke and Mark. Luke 8. All right. Are you all there? Verse. Let's begin in verse uh, 40. That's it. Yeah. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned from Capernaum, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Well, that's what we're doing right now as Christians. We're waiting on Jesus. And believe me, when the rapture happens and the trumpet sounds, we're going to be glad he did. he's come back. Amen. <laughs> and behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler, a ruler of the synagogue. He was the head uh, preacher. Look what happens here. And he fell down at Jesus' feet. That's a good place to be. And besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Now, while he's going, that woman with the issue of blood of 12 years uh, gets healed by Jesus. Amen. And her soul saved. Amen. And that goes on in the next verses, and I don't want to read all of that. Uh, but look at verse uh, 49. And while he yet spoke, in other words, to the lady he healed of the 12 years of blood issue, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead, trouble not the master. In other words, he said, Well, it's too late. She's passed away. <laughs> What's the reason I'm laughing is that I heard Dr. Jack's voice in my head saying, when you have a funeral coming up one way and you have the resurrection and the life coming in with a head-on collision, uh, there's not going to be no funeral. <laughs> Take your chicken and fried chicken and banana pudding home. There's going to be a resurrection. <laughs> and that's what happened here. Uh, and But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not. Do you know what the most uh, re repeated command in the Bible by God is to people? Fear not. It's mentioned 365 times in the Bible. God doesn't want us fearing. He wants us having faith. Now, this man could have easily let that bad news stop him. But then he looked and heard Jesus. And Jesus said, fear not. Listen to what the Lord says to him. Believe only. <laughs> when, it, when, all, when it seems like all hope's gone, Jesus says, believe me. Yeah. And she shall be made whole. In other words, he said, I'm going to raise her from the dead. That's what he basically told him. So here we go. Let's see what happens. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John. That's Jesus' inner circle. And the father and mother of the child, the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed him to scorn. Now these were paid mourners here. Uh, that in the days of Jesus, they would, if people didn't have a large family or enough people to mourn uh, their loved one, they would pay people to come and act like they cared. How about that? And these people laughed Jesus to scorn. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus always has the last laugh. <laughs> he put these scorners out of there. So, 
<laughs> think about that. Uh, he said uh, uh, right here, uh, no, and he put them all out. Uh, the scholars say it was a forceful ejection. Jesus basically threw them out of there. Amen. And uh, and took her by the hand and called, saying, "Maid, arise!" <laughs> and her spirit came again, and she rose straightway. And he commanded uh, to give her meat. Are y'all feeling the Holy Ghost like I am? You know, after people get saved, the first thing we need to start feeding them is the Word of God, the Bible. Give them some meat. And her parents were astonished. I guess so. I'm astonished and I'm reading it tonight. He just raised somebody from the dead. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Now that's, you know, the Lord has his reasons for that. I want to preach tonight, and I'm not much of a preacher, never have been, but God called me. I want to preach tonight on the master and the miracle. You know, Jesus is the only one that can do miracles. <laughs> I recommend Jesus to you. I mean, if you need something tonight, I recommend Jesus to you. If you need to be saved tonight, he's the only way to go to, he's the only way to heaven. He's the only savior. I recommend Jesus to you. I mean, I don't know what you need tonight. I know we got different people from different states. We got people we don't even know watching. I don't know what you need tonight, but I want to recommend the Lord to you. He's a specialist in every case. He doesn't have a referral system. Whatever problem you have, he can deal with, he can deal with it. And uh, the biggest problem we have is sin, and he's the Savior. You need to trust him. You need to believe he died for your sins on the cross. He arose from the dead on the third day for you. And then you need to ask him into your heart and let his divine blood wash your sins away. Once you ask him in your heart, you become a child of God and much, much more. Now, we see here in this chapter... And the preceding things that Jesus did, yes, he is the answer to all problems. Amen, Sister Marilyn. Amen, Sister Marilyn. She, she's encouraging me there. She's known me a long time, her and her husband and all her sons. They're all grown men now. Wow. That means I'm getting old. But in this chapter preceding this awesome miracle that Jesus did for Jairus and his wife, raising their only child from the dead, we see him as the master of disaster. He calmed the stormy sea. He's still the master of the sea. Squire Parsons wrote a lot of great songs. That's one of them. And then we see him casting demons out of people. That means that he has all power over, over the devil and the demons of hell. In this proceeding of this miracle, we see the woman with the issue of blood. She had spent all of her money on doctors was broke and Jesus was her last hope as I said uh, her only hope excuse me and and like I said she's the only person recorded in the Bible that took power from God think about that we see Jesus having all power over disease but now God says I'm just gonna win the whole game I'm gonna let the whole universe know I have all power and authority over death. Think about it. He broke up his own funeral. <laughs> there was a black preacher in Texas who pastored 55 years. They, the, and I mean, he was up in age, and the doctors came in and told him, and I need to tell you this as the Holy Ghost leads me, this is a true story. And he was on his deathbed in the hospital. And uh, the doctors came in and they did all they could do to help him. So they gathered the family in and said, well, this, uh, there's, you're probably going to pass away here, preacher. But we've done all we can do. Unless God intervenes, you're gone. Well, after the family and everybody left that night, the spirit of death came to his room. 
Are you hearing me tonight? And the pastor, he was standing at the foot of his bed. I guess it was his time to go. And this pastor told this other preacher who told it to his congregation last Sunday, this true story. He asked death, the spirit of death, don't you have any compassion? And the spirit of death told this man of God, I have no compassion. I have a job to do, and that's the job I do. And he started going down a list to the spirit of death. Of how can you take a mother from her children and a father from her children and a father from you know, on and on to different types of scenarios. And every one of them, the spirit of death would, would say, that's my job. I, don't, I have no compassion. That's my job. And so he asked, the man of God said, well, if that's the case, are y'all sitting down? I'm about to tell you something. He said, if that's the case, you have no compassion. Has there ever been somebody you haven't defeated? And the spirit of death said, yes, only one. It was on a Friday. Are y'all sitting down? It was on a Friday he died. I thought I had him. On Saturday, I started being concerned. And on Sunday, I lost him. He arose from the dead. And he told that preacher, I can't get to him. Because he's forever more alive and he's in heaven. Somebody ought to say amen out there. That's why to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. You can tell that. That's a true story I just told you. Now, let me get to this message. I'll never get to preach. <laughs> My wife's in there shouting and having a time. <laughs> we should. Number one, we have a pitiful dialogue, if you like taking notes on what preachers preach. A pitiful dialogue here. We have a, a man of God or a pastor who has got, in, got life has happened, and his little girl is dying, and, and by the time Jesus gets halfway to his house, she's dead. That's a sad situation. That's when life hits you and you don't have no answer. I mean, he was a big shot. He was popular. He was powerful in the, in the world's eyes. He probably had great possessions. On and on. But it didn't do him any good here. It didn't do him any good here. You know what Jairus' name means? His name means he who God enlightens. And I'm telling you, God's getting ready to open his eyes. I'm glad when I got saved, God opened my eyes. Somebody ought to help me out there tonight. Amen. Now, we see here a pitiful dialogue. But he had enough sense. And I'm glad I have enough sense. I'm not the sharpest knife. But I've got enough sense to know when life hits me with a, 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 a tough situation, you better get to Jesus. And that's what he did. you got to commend him. He was a critic of Jesus. He was against Jesus, according to scholars. But now life has hit him hard, and his religion can't help him. Judaism can't help him. But Jesus can. And you know what? Jesus will. We're going to see here that uh, Jairus comes to him, and he asks him, Will you go to my house and heal my daughter? Because she's not dead yet. You know what I'm saying? Something happened to him that changed his attitude toward Jesus. And I believe it was this. He realized that here's Jesus going around healing and raising the dead and casting out demons. Here he is, according to scholars, one of his number one critics and trying his best to destroy him. And now his own daughter is sick unto death and only Jesus can help her. Yes, Lord. You know... That would change anybody that has any heart at all. Huh? So number one, we have the pitiful dialogue. But watch this. This father's in desperation. It brings him to Jesus, and he asks Jesus, will you help me? And Jesus said, sure, to his number one critic in the area. I'll come to your house and help her. I'll help you. 
What a compassionate God we serve. Number two, we have a painful delay. Now, she's already sick unto death, this little girl. According to scholars, she's 12 years old, I believe. According, I think the Bible says she's 12 in other scriptures. She's already un, almost sick unto death. I mean, we're in a hurry. I believe Jairus was leading him through the crowd saying, we've got to hurry, Jesus. And all of a sudden, the crowds got so big, it slowed him down. Huh? And all of a sudden, a woman stops him. Yeah. And she gets healed, and it slows them down. Yes. And after Jesus tells this woman, you're healed, your faith has healed you, your faith has saved your soul because you trusted me, Jesus, as her Savior. If you read the scriptural accounts, someone from the Jairus' uh, synagogue comes into the crowd and tells Jairus, don't bother the master anymore. Notice he said master. <laughs> that kind of levels out the field, doesn't it? Master of what, I wonder? Of everything, my friend. Jesus is God. There's nothing beyond him. Oh, man, I feel the Lord tonight. But what did Jesus say? Don't fear. Believe. Shoo, God, Lord. I mean, can you put yourself in Jairus' shoes? His buddy just said, your daughter's dead. Don't bother him no more. And then the master turns around and looks at me or you and says, don't fear and listen to that. Just believe I can do it. That's faith, friend. I don't know if I could have been as good as Jairus on this. I'd have probably said, Jesus, did you just hear him? <laughs> But he's looking at the resurrection to life, right? So here we go. We have this painful delay. Notice Jairus doesn't get critical or complain or anything. Do y'all notice this? He's just going with the flow of the Lord. He says, well, let's just see what happens. I mean, that's what we're about to find out, right? So here we go. We have the pitiful dialogue. We have the painful delay. Thank God for that delay. That woman got healed of an issue of blood and her soul was saved. But now, watch this. We have the powerful deliverance. You know, our God is in the delivering business. You go through the Old Testament. He delivered Moses and the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Daniel from the lion's den. I mean, we could go on and on here. David versus Goliath. The nation of Israel versus Haman. On and on we can go tonight. Our God is in the delivering business. And here's the greatest news of all. He's still in business tonight. Amen. Like the hoppers sing. We have here a powerful deliverance that is about to happen. A supernatural miracle from God Almighty. I like what one preacher he said I, he said, maybe the Holy Ghost told Jairus, wait till you see what God's about to do for you since you waited. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight you have family, children, people you raised, family, you know, friends that are in bad situations. I recommend you give them to Jesus. Now we see here in this situation that Jesus, notice Jesus was completely holy. And he couldn't, you know, according to the Jewish religion, they weren't allowed to touch dead things. They weren't allowed to be around dead things. But, you know, uh, three, uh, they weren't to be around, according to the that time, to have dealings with the satanic world. In Jesus' day, they weren't allowed to be around diseased people like that woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was God. In the flesh, the Savior of the world, the only true Messiah. Check this out. He did. He wasn't concerned with ceremonial rituals. He was compassionate. Y'all understand what's going on here? He didn't allow traditions and man-made traditions and uh, and ceremonial rules and all of this to keep him from helping people. That's one reason the Pharisees hated him. 
I mean, they didn't even think he should be healed on the Sabbath. Jesus said, I'm the God of the Sabbath. I can do what I want on the Sabbath. Do y'all understand what he did here? And here we see him raising this dead, young, 12-year-old girl back from the dead. This pictures our resurrection to come in the Lord. If you know Jesus tonight, if the rapture comes, you're going out of here. If death gets me tonight, I'm, I'll be, the body will still be here, but my soul will be in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Well, I'll amen it because it's my soul. We see here tonight, we have a father in desperation invited Jesus into the situation. We have friends that doubted God that, tried, that were blinded that Christ could even raise the dead. And here at last, we have scorners that Jesus had to, when he got there, these professional paid mourners uh, laughed Jesus to scorn when he said the child's not dead but sleeps. And when they started laughing at him, he put them out. He said, get them out of here. After they were all out of here, he had only people that believed in the miraculous of Jesus and believed in Jesus. And tonight, that's what we needed, the word for the word broadcast. We need people that support us, that believe not only in what I'm doing for the Lord, but the Lord that I'm doing it for. Did y'all hear that statement? We, we need people of faith in the Lord. God can do a lot of things through us tonight on social media, on YouTube, on TikTok, wherever I, God puts me. My wife's even working on a podcast. I want God to use me. I want God to use me to be a blessing to people, to see people saved on our broadcast. And that's why I tell people all the time, if you trust Jesus, let us know. We won't know unless you tell us. So tonight, we see the pitiful dialogue. We see the painful delay, but thank God tonight for the powerful deliverance. Jesus raised her from the dead and then said, give her something to eat. Tonight, what is your situation? I'm done tonight. What is the situation tonight that you're facing? I'm sitting here right now as I'm sitting here in the kitchen of my little humble, our humble little abode doing this broadcast for Jesus. So we already know he approves it because he approved it with uh, signs and wonders at the beginning of the broadcast. I haven't been watching since I started preaching. Tonight in Turkey, Thousands of people perished within seconds. You said, what are you talking about? An earthquake. Y'all heard about it on the news. Thousands of people went out into eternity. Thousands. Let that shake you tonight. We got a lot of work to do. We got people to reach for Jesus. Tonight our prayers go out to the people of that area. For every single family. Can you imagine the thousands of funerals they're going to be having? Folks, that could happen here. We act like it won't happen here. It could happen here. We have earthquake tremors all the time in South Carolina. We may be needing prayer one day. We got to get back to compassion, folks. That's what I saw through this whole miracle. We've got to be compassionate. We've got to care about... Uh, We've got to get away from this self-me, self-entitlement, this blinded, I don't know what got most Americans acting like this, but we've got to get back to being compassionate and caring about people. And only God will be able to do that in people's hearts. But we've got to pray that that happens. All right, I'm done. Uh, contact information only give it out on Sundays if you'd like. Contact info, get information, you can private message, email me at cordellclayton at yahoo.com or contact my wife. I hope you're enjoying these, uh, uh, these uh, messages on Tuesday night on the miracles of Jesus. I want to give a shout out again to preacher Chad West and his wife. Uh, he uh, gave us a whole new load of deer meat and that, my wife has gotten real good at cooking this deer meat. We eat deer meat with everything. Uh, but the, the main thing is, is that it saves us about $120 a month than just meat costs at the grocery store. That's a lot of money for us, you know, on our limited budget. So we want to give a shout out to Chad West and his wife and uh, for them giving another box of deer meat to us. And that deer meat will probably last another month or whatever. 
or two months. So, hey, and I love it. My wife cooks it. You don't even know it's deer meat. It is good. Tonight we had chili and hot dogs. You can't beat that. So a shout out to him. Shout out to all of y'all. Make sure you hit the share button. Let folks know I'm on TikTok. Uh, if you want to follow me, I give a three-minute uh, video every day on TikTok. Also, now tomorrow morning I go back into work. Uh, Amazon bought me some new uh, safety boots, so I'll be uh, where I'll, I'll probably wear it in tomorrow. It ain't real comfortable. Uh, so I want to shout out to them for buying that. They didn't have to do that for us. That's another hundred dollars I don't have to spend. And we got some good news from a tax lady today. We're going to get back some money. That'll help us. So the Lord is uh, meeting, meeting the needs. <laughs> He's a me a need meeting God. <laughs> he is Jehovah Jireh, the God who already has provided in advance. And uh, remember Preacher Carter as he continues his rehab, rehab for the next probably a couple months. Uh, so uh, I think he said he wanted me to preach for him uh, until he gets back, and I'll do that. It's no problem. But uh, I, when I do preach over there, I'll put it on Facebook and YouTube where you can see it. Uh, so, all right, everybody. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the Jewish people in the nation of Israel. The next time I'll be on here is tomorrow, the next four, uh, Wednesday through Monday, uh, Saturday in the mornings. Uh, you can see it throughout the day on my Facebook page. Uh, I share things on uh, daily devotional. There just went another dove. And, uh, I mean, it's, you know, hey, folks, look, God is, I believe we're living in the last of the last days. And so uh, he is the way maker. Amen. Uh, you meant to say way maker, didn't you, Pam? <laughs> Pam hit Pam hits the wrong letters like me, and she put was maker. <laughs> she meant way maker. He is the way maker. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, I'll keep you updated with Pastor David Carter's progress in the days to come. And so until tomorrow morning, yeah, you did, didn't you, Brother Mark? There you go. And so until tomorrow morning, uh, thank you for tuning into this. Brother Mark, thank you for your notes tonight. Uh, as you see, they were put into the uh, lesson there. I got them right at before broadcast time. And so, and I share a couple of other ministries on my Facebook page. Y'all might be interested. Uh, tonight, we had over 34 comments so far. That's the most we've ever had. Uh, we have people from Virginia, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina that have commented so far. So we're, we're glad God has got people watching us. And we hope that we're a blessing. We hope, uh, we hope that you uh, it gives you a hunger for the Bible, and of course, we hope that you're saved. As far as I know, all the names that I've seen in the comment section are saved. And please uh, share this where other people that aren't saved may uh, watch. Prayer requests. My wife has a. Uh, Y'all see that prayer request right there on the bottom. My wife has a mammogram tomorrow at 3 p.m. So who would like to be anointed for my wife tonight? Put oil in the comment section if you'd like to be anointed symbolically through the screen. Anybody want to be anointed for my wife? If not, I will type oil. And say, yes, yeah, see the doves four times. Amen. Uh, all right. Anybody want to be anointed for my wife? If not, I'll type in oil. Let me type it in. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Oil, Sister Marilyn White. All right. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, she says, thank you. So let me get the oil out. Mar Marilyn, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in the screen. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let's pray together. Sister Tammy Todd, oil. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, sisters in the Lord. Anybody else? We agree. Rod Parsley's preaching a series of sermons on Psalms 23 and preaching on agreement in prayer. There's power in agreement. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you my wife tonight, and may the test come back negative, and may she have a wonderful life. In Jesus' name we pray, and we pray for the doctors, their salvation, and for you to help them. And Brother David tonight, bless him tonight. In Jesus' name, and anybody else that needs a request on here, heal them in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. That's out Karen Mays, oil tonight for my wife. Sister Pam Strickland, oil tonight. All these women of God on here. Sister Tammy Todd, Sister Marilyn, Sister Pam, Sister 
caring. Hallelujah for the women of God tonight that uh, coveted and agreed with my wife. And uh, by the way, the number five is grace in the Bible. How about that? You say, well, where's the fifth woman at? I'm number five. I'm a man. I make the number five. And there's five of us tonight with my wife agreed in prayer for uh, good results tomorrow on her uh, 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 mammogram. Okay, it's at 3 p.m. And we, uh, in, uh, you're not going to invade our privacy if you ask tomorrow with messages how she's doing. We would love to hear that. That's encouraging. All right, I'm done. Hope I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't do too good tonight. I tried. <laughs> there wasn't another dove, y'all. Did you see it go out in the back of my head toward the screen? Folks, listen to me. God's blessing this little broadcast. Not because I'm doing it. For some reason, he just likes what I'm doing for Jesus. <laughs> it amazes me. There just one another right up through the middle of the screen. So whatever. We're just going to keep going for Jesus and let him get the glory. And uh, let's go to bed in victory tonight and casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Sister Tammy, they're flying everywhere tonight. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, last night I thought I saw one, but there wasn't one come on uh, Sunday night or last night, I believe. I did a broadcast or maybe it was Sunday night. And uh, I told the Holy Ghost before I came on here, I anointed the mic, I anointed the the phone, I anointed the computer, I anointed me, I anointed the uh, the screen behind me three times, the backdrop, and I said, Dove, Doves, I missed y'all the other night. <laughs> I guess they decided, well, if he if he missed us that much, we better go in there and have swarm tonight. I'm just tickled to death. There were so many of them flying around tonight that old brother Mark even saw one fly up through the screen, so... Amen. So uh, we thankful for the doves of the Holy Ghost tonight. Flying through the broadcast, taking this broadcast to people we'll never probably meet till we get to heaven if they get saved. They'll come up and say, you know, I was watching that broadcast and I got saved. You know, we just don't know what's going on, but the Holy Ghost knows. All right, we'll see y'all. <laughs> Good night.